everybody, in today's video, we're taking your 3D print supports from this to this. So let's go. So I'm a high school technology education teacher in Pennsylvania, and I teach CAD. And in my classroom, we're able to produce hundreds of 3D prints per year. Up until this past year with those 3D prints, I just use Cura's recommended support settings. So I'm entering my sixth year of teaching, and I've certainly learned a lot up to this point. And one of those things that I've really tried to tackle is how to optimize my supports so they're easy to remove, they look great, and they don't damage the print coming off. So I've spent the last two months of my school year watching videos, doing research, and figuring out the ideal way to make the projects that we do in my classroom have supports that are super easy to work with. So I think I've finally nailed that process down and have a process that's easy for my students to use. So if you'd like, I'd love to show you. So let's dive right in. All right, everybody. So now that we're in Cura, um, one of the things that we want to do is be able to access all of the settings. Okay. So in order to do that, in order to get to these settings that we're going to work with today, I'm going to click on the setting tabs up in the top right, just where it says normal, click in that box. Now, typically it will show up as this here in order to access all of your settings. Then I'm going to go to show custom and there are going to be three lines over on the right hand side. Click on those three lines and I'm going to hit all. So that will show me all of the settings that Cura has accessible to us in order to try and adjust our 3D prints. All right, now that we have access to all of our settings, let's talk about what we actually want to change. Okay, so I saw this phenomenal video, I'll place them on the screen right now, I'll link it down in the video description below, is they talked about using a bunch of different settings um, such as enabling support interface, support roof, support floor, and then messing around with your top and bottom distances of your support. Again, we'll show you here the, those here in just a second. But one of the suggestions in that video was actually taking a smaller print um, and testing your uh, printer and your filament to see what works best for your situation. So that's exactly what I did. Um, one of these main pro uh, projects that I tested was my student made a phenomenal uh, Lego TIE fighter design. So one of my cool projects that we do is we take a Lego set, they can find one online, um, and they essentially remake it in Fusion, put all the pieces together using joint commands, etc. And they're left with a pretty cool um, Lego style figure. I thought taking one of those wings would be a perfect suggestion, a uh, perfect way to test our support settings. Um, there's so many different nooks and crannies that support can go in. And honestly, when we printed this out the first couple times, it was just awful to remove and took forever. So I figured this would be the perfect test. Okay, so I cut this up in Fusion a little bit just so we're left with the wing itself and nothing more. It'll be a quick print, something that we can test very simply, but also again, we'll have a lot of areas where that support can hide so we can see how well it removes. So once we have the file ready to go, and I can link that file uh, as well if you want to use this same thing to test, is I'm going to go down into my settings tab. And I'm going to first look at the support Z distance. Okay, So that support Z distance, in that video, it talks about how those aren't going to be the same for everybody, and nor should they be the same in um, your print. Now for mine, I seem to find the best was at 0.4 for both the support top and support bottom, okay? So again, 0.4, um, essentially what that means is it's the distance from the top of your support, meaning the highest line to the actual print itself. Same exact thing from support bottom. I set those both to 0.4. Now again, keep in mind, I'm just in normal supports right now. We'll talk about tree supports here in a second, okay? Now, another change that I made, oops, went a little bit too far, is the roof density and the floor density. So essentially that's going to be the percentage of the strength of the support filament itself. Now, um, I found that for our prints and our filament, again, we use the Ultimaker printers, um, is having a floor, the floor thickness, or I'm sorry, the floor um, density is not super important. Okay, so what I did is I did a floor density of right around 20%. Okay, that floor density seemed to be ideal again for our prints. The roof density was a little bit different just because there were a lot of these areas where you're going to have roof. Okay, so I wanted that just a little bit stronger because the floor will typically not need to be as strong. So I did about 40% for that setting there. Okay, um, and honestly, that was the majority of the changes that I made to begin with. Okay, now. What I did is I tried both of these with the normal style um, settings, so the normal uh, supports, as well as the tree supports. And again, I'll talk about the 
both of those here in a second. But once I go through and slice these, you can see if I go into my preview tab, how much support is generated here. And what we're trying to change is this area right here, right? Again, wherever it comes into contact with the print itself is what we are trying to change. So any area here that it's going to be close to the print, we wanna make sure that that is a pretty good gap. If it's closer, that means the support itself is going to fuse tighter to the print. Now, I tried normal supports to begin with, and while it was better, it was still very difficult, okay? So um, what I ended up doing is keeping the same exact settings and trying tree supports, and that was absolutely the ticket, okay? With an odd print like this, it was just so much better to use the tree supports. They were so much easier to remove. The print was quicker. It was just 100% the way to go. So again, you can see that there is far less support it's going to be printed, it's about an hour less time. And here you can very easily see that Z distance that we're talking about with our Z top here. Now that you've kind of seen the settings that we've changed, okay, let me kind of cut to a couple videos that I have of the supports, trying to move the support from one of the models that we did just the uh, regular support widths, and then one of the, the same models that I did with uh, the tree support. So you can see the difference in um, the support quality and the changes that we've made. Take a look here. See that this is that normal support. And that is just miserable to remove. You need a pair of pliers to get it out. And even if you do that, you can see how rough that is to remove. So after those videos that you saw, I thought that we had this pretty well ironed out. And then what we did is we tried another really cool model that one of my students made of Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And what we found is that this area here, and honestly most of it in particular, um, went very, very poorly in terms of trying to remove that. So let me put a picture up on the screen here um, about what exactly that looked like. But honestly, with the tree supports, this particular area um, was almost impossible to remove. It all melted together because um, there were so many different uh, branches of that tree support that tried to go on that flat bottom. So with that being said, I kept the exact same uh, Z distances that we talked about, the 0.4 um, for the top and the bottom, as well as the 40% and 20% densities and what I did and the only change that I made was changed it to a normal support so you can see that that drastically increases the print time but what's gonna happen is these normal supports are going to be so much better underneath um, these straight across areas again the tree supports just aren't great for um, those particular flat areas now if you don't like the time on the print there's a couple things that you can do um, in the support area uh, one the overall infill obviously you could decrease but you can also decrease things like um, the support density that's an option as well sometimes i mess around with that like 60 percent seems to help out quite a bit um, i wouldn't go any lower than that just based off personal experience um, but you can also change things like the line distance um, which is just going to be the distance in between each of these lines here um, 
but again, the higher you go with those, the less time it'll take, but the less um, secure your print is going to be. So that's the video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any suggestions for me, again, I'm still learning a lot, but I'm just sharing what works for me. So if you have any suggestions, anything that works well for you, anything you'd like to see in future videos, please let me know. I'd love to chat with you down in the comments. You can also send me an email at kennedydiy01 at gmail.com. Uh, love to chat with you. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.